So what is it about serial killers that makes us think of terrorism? Hi, this is Phil Gursky, President and CEO of Borealis Threat and Risk Consulting in Russell, Canada. You're listening to Quick Hits. A couple years ago, I did a series of podcasts on the Swedish production called Caliphate, which was the story of a Swedish woman who followed her husband to Syria and or Iraq to join ISIS. It was a multi-part series. And I looked at the various episodes from the perspective of how faithfully I think they covered the notion of terrorism and more importantly, counterterrorism, because the Swedish intelligence service, SEPO, uh, was hugely involved in the uh, following the woman, trying to get her home, etc., etc. I want to pick up on another Scandinavian series. This is one, a a 10-part series that my wife and I watched on Acorn or BritBox or one of those apps called Visting. It was made in 2019. Apparently, it was the most expensive series made in Norwegian television history. And like a lot of Scandinavian TV, it's very dark. They call it Nordic Noir for a reason. This particular series is about a man called William Visting, who is a police officer in Larvik, which is a city in Norway. This particular series starts off with the discovery of a body in a very, very wintry Norway. The snow seems to be at least waist deep in most areas. And it sets off a really interesting investigation into the possibility of a serial killer in Norway, who in actual fact is an American. So I don't want to give away too many details. I don't want to be any any plot spoilers in this particular podcast. I highly recommend you watch this series. It's very, very, very well done. But the bottom line is, is that an American named Robert Godwin, who's been killing girls in the United States for years, escapes, goes to Norway, where apparently his ancestors are from, and it is believed that he's living in plain view under an assumed identity. So we basically either killed someone or somehow got someone's birth details or is essentially living as that person in Norwegian society. It's quite riveting. It's quite, uh, it has on, on the on the edge of your seat for much of it. But there's two things I want to talk about. Whether or not serial killers can be seen as terrorists and what happens when various international police forces are forced to cooperate and collaborate to get the job done. So first and foremost, this Robert Godwin targeted young women, usually blonde, and he would capture them, he would them, he would torture them, and then he would kill them. And he appears to be doing the same thing in Norway. And they they find a bunch of bodies that are spread over a number of years, and they realize that a bunch of cold cases are probably tied to him. So they have a serial killer on, on the loose. Serial killers are not normally associated with terrorism. Now, I've been having this debate on Twitter just over the past couple hours with somebody, I don't know where they're, somewhere in the Twitterverse, who took issue with my qualification that recent stabbings in Sweden, which were initially investigated as possibly terrorism, are now being investigated as multiple stabbings, multiple wounds. No one has died yet, to the best of my knowledge, thank God. And this person took me to task saying, well, you, you, you said it wasn't terrorism. People were terrorized. Being terrorized is not the definition of terrorism. People are terrorized for all kinds of reasons. Some people are terrorized of heights. Some are terrorized of spiders. Snakes terrorize people. Giving a presentation in public terrorizes people. Yet we wouldn't call heights, spiders, snakes, and public presentations acts of terrorism. There has to be an ideological or political underpinning, rationale, raison d'etre, for something to be called terrorism. And in the Visting series, there is no motivation. Simply somebody who likes to capture women, harm them, and eventually take their lives. Ergo, this is not a series of acts of terrorism. It is simply a series of mass murders. In the same way that Alec Manassian, who was just found guilty yesterday in Toronto, was found guilty of murder, not of terrorism. So we have to make a distinction between murder 
and the act of terrorism, which could in fact involve murder or attempted murder, as it did clearly on 9-11, with the deaths of more than almost 3,000 people. That was definitely 3,000 acts of terrorism, all in one bundle. So let's not confuse the two, shall we? Special Agent Maggie Griffin, nice to meet you. Robert Godwin is wanted for six murders in the U.S. We're hunting a serial killer. The second thing I want to comment on in this series is the fact that because Robert Godwin started his murder spree in the United States and is believed to be now being in Norway, the FBI gets involved and they send two agents, a senior female agent and a younger male agent, to assist Norwegian police in their investigations. And to say it doesn't start off well would be a bit of an under, underselling. The Americans come in very aggressively. They want to basically take over the case. The lead agent is actually the same woman who played in the series with, um, I'm, I'm drawing a blank here. Um, it'll come back to me. She basically wants the Norwegians to do whatever she, whatever she wants. And she introduces some practices that are countered to Norwegian law which causes a lot of tension, especially with one of the, the older police officers who may have a thing against Americans to begin with and really hates how this woman's trying to push, push things around. To me, th this was actually quite realistic. And I certainly know in, in my time in security intelligence, we worked with uh, an awful lot of allies around the world because we had to. Each of us had a piece of the puzzle. We had to share information. And in some cases, we actually had parallel investigations, sometimes even joint investigations whether it was terrorism or counter-espionage or in the law enforcement world, world, organized crime, serious crime, etc. So there's al always ample opportunity to deal with foreign partners. The problems are when the foreign partners try to dominate. And yes, I've seen Americans do this in Canada as well. And secondly, where laws aren't the same in both countries. So for example, in Norway, there's no open carry law. Most police officers do not carry guns, is my understanding. And yet the Americans, of course, carry guns all the time. So there's a bit of a, a tension between what the Americans want to do and what the Norwegians want to do. There's also an issue over body cameras, which again, the Norwegians don't wear, but the Americans do. I think this points to the challenges of working internationally in security intelligence or law enforcement, and the fact that you're not always going to get along. The, the nice part, at least for, for the Americans in, in this regard, is that the Norwegians all spoke really good English. And that is true. I've been to Norway. I've dealt with the PST, which is their security intelligence service, the analog to CSIS, the Canadian Security Intelligence Service, where I work, and they all speak flawless English. It's really quite amazing of the Scandinavian countries. So at least they can communicate, but they don't really get along. Anyhow, I'm not going to spoil the ending. You got to watch a series that's really, really good. I will say a third thing, though, that for me personally, it was great to watch a series in Norwegian, albeit with English subtitles, because it brought back memories for me. When I worked in, in signals intelligence decades and decades ago, we had a sharing relationship with the Norwegians. This, of course, was during the Cold War. And because Norway abuts the Soviet Union, or now, sorry, Russia, then the Soviet Union, they had a unique insight into some Soviet maneuvers, which they would share with us with Norwegian comments. And I had to actually teach Norwegian to, to my fellow analysts who couldn't read it so they could read the Norwegian comments. So while watching the show, all my Norwegian was starting to come back to me. I couldn't understand the, the conversation completely because it was very rapid Norwegian. And my specialty was written Norwegian, not spoken. But as episode followed episode, I found I was picking up more and more Norwegian all the time, which was kind of cool. Kind of a blast from the past for me. Anyhow, I highly recommend the series Visting. You can look it up on IMDb. It's a bit dark, like Nordic Noir, but it's a fascinating series about serial killers. I think you'll enjoy it. I want to recognize, unfortunately, I don't have a Norwegian jersey, but I do have a Swedish Trekroner, the Three Crowns jersey that the Swedish national team wears. And well, Sweden's beside Norway, and Norway doesn't have a great hockey team, so I'm going to let the Norwegians uh, live vicariously through the Swedes today. So of course, I need to leave you as well with your hardy boys bit of wisdom and for today we're going to let's see what's today's thing well here's a good one from the mystery of cabin island when walking along the edge of a precipice don't look down so if you're doing surveillance against a bad guy be it a criminal or a terrorist or a foreign spy and he happens to be walking beside a cliff don't look down it's gonna end badly for you anyhow Curious if you've watched the Visting series and what you thought of it. 
Love to hear feedback. You can reach me on email borealisrisk at gmail.com or on Twitter at borealisaves. You can also find me on LinkedIn and on Facebook. If you like this content and want to get more, please go to my website, borealisthreatrisk.com. Hit the subscribe button. Give me your email address. You'll get free daily digest, all the blogs, all the podcasts, access to the YouTube as well. Highly suggest you subscribe to the Borealis YouTube channel. Now that we're live casting, live streaming every night, a lot of material there as well. You'd also find a link to my new book, The Peaceable Kingdom, A History of Terrorism in Canada from Confederation to the Present. It's only $25 in Canada. I got lots of copies for you, signed copies that I can send out to you. Anyhow, I hope to hear from you soon. We'll talk again in a bit. Until then, stay safe.